Hi and welcome. My name is Dr. Mina Atia, and today I would love to share my supernatural story with you. You know, back in 2010, I had an out-of-body experience, and this experience changed the course of my life. To start with, I was born in Egypt, Cairo, and my parents came from a very strict traditional Christian tradition, and they raised me up from the start on the pathway of that tradition, traditional church. I began to become a deacon in that church and to serve the Lord in that church and fast twice a week and do all the things that a traditional Christian boy would do. Then at the age of 11, I migrated to Australia with my family. I went through schooling and then to university, which I studied pharmacy. And then I opened my business. And then I got married to my beautiful wife, Yvonne, and we had two beautiful children. Everything was going fine in my religious circles, and I was just doing what I learned how to do. And uh, not knowing that there is more to God or that you could experience a supernatural experience with a supernatural God. In uh, late 2010, uh, while I was conducting my business, I had a very unfortunate um, event that happened in the business that made me realize that life has much more to do with what we're doing, not just to do it as a religious exercise. I began to question everything around me. And at that moment, the grace of God really touched my heart to begin to think about what we do as traditional Christians. I began to read the Bible in a different way. I began to fast in a different way. I began to ask the Lord to really speak to me. My hunger grew wildly larger than I ever experienced before. I mean, I would typically spend my weekends at the church teaching the hymns, teaching the tradition, teaching the old traditional Coptic language. But then I started to question whether God really speaks to me or not. Does He speak to people right now? Tradition put on me and the religious spirits that used to possess me put on me that God is far from speaking to me. I'm a sinful man. No matter what I do, I will never please Him. But in late 2010, after reading my Bible as a religious man, I opened the book to the prophet Jeremiah. And in that time, God spoke to me clearly. He said, I formed you in the womb. I knew you. I consecrated you. You are mine. And those words leaped off the pages of the Bible and spoke to me personally. And not, you know, coming from a Middle Eastern background, I don't normally cry or show any emotions. But on that particular day, I remember starting to weep as the Lord spoke to me through His Word. Then I thought, you know what? I am going to start reading the Psalms. And so I opened the Psalms books. And as I was reading Psalm 2 and verse 7, my, my eyes read this, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask me and I shall give you the nations. And these words again leaped off the pages of the Psalms book and touched my heart in such a way that I began to weep. And I thought, what a weird day. What is this day? What is happening to me today? In any case, around 3 p.m. the same day, as I was laying on my couch at home, and as my wife was praying for me, and she was just fasting and praying that I would experience the Lord in a supernatural way. I had this supernatural experience where as I was sitting on the couch, I found myself outside my body. I actually saw myself sitting on that couch. And as I was sitting there, for the first time in my life, I began to hear the Lord's voice. And this was a real event to, a, to an extent where I thought that this is what they claim to say, that this is demonic possession. I thought I was hearing, hallucinating. I was hearing things that didn't happen in reality. But 
the sweet voice of the Lord came to me and I saw the angelic realms and I saw this white, beautiful, radiant, it's hard to explain, light that out of it came a still voice that was so peaceful that gave me this assurance and courage to continue on with this supernatural phenomena, this supernatural experience. And as I was seeing myself sitting there on the couch, I heard the demonic realms speak over my life. And as they spoke, they said, they started to instill fear in my soul. And they said to me, tell this voice to be silent, to shut down and shut up. But this angelic voice, and it was almost like a fight over my soul, over my spirit, over this experience that the demonic became so enraged to silence that voice and yet the angelic and God's voice came with so much joy and peace. And I was almost like torn between two realities, whether that this is a supernatural experience. I didn't grow up in a tradition where you could actually experience such a phenomenon. Maybe you know, in passing in uh, early church fathers' history, you, you would read about a saint so-and-so experiencing a supernatural phenomenon, but this is not something I was accustomed to. And so this whole experience became an out-of-body experience for me to the point where this voice started to prophesy on me. And when he prophesied, I didn't know that scripture, but he said to me that I have called you like I called Abraham. You will leave the land that you know, the house that you know. You will walk with me. And as I have changed the name of Abraham to Abraham, I will change your identity. I will change your name. I will give you a new name. And I thought, that's amazing. I kept on hearing that voice prophesy over me. It's almost like God won the battle in that moment and I just surrendered everything that I have. That vicious, rude voice of the enemy became silent. I could still sense their presence around my soul. I could sense their presence around, but the voice of the Lord overcame them. Then the Lord started to prophesy over me. And he said this, that I will make your towers like pearls and your gate like precious stones. And I didn't really know that this scripture was out of Isaiah 54. I didn't, I read the Bible as a religious exercise. I knew some verses in the Bible to recite them at the church, but really I didn't live a supernatural lifestyle. But then it was around Christmas time, it was clearly December 2010. And then he said to me, look to your right. And while I was sitting in that couch, there was a Christmas and a nativity scene just to my right. And he said this, he said, look at how I was born. I was born a simple poor man and I washed the feet of my disciples. I am going to teach you how to wash feet, how to become a servant to many people, how to serve them and carry my name. Now you got to understand friends that at that time, all I know is religious circles. I don't even know how to share the salvation story of Jesus and his word and the good news of the Bible with someone who is not in my circles, someone who is a stranger to me. But this voice continued on and he said this to me, I will teach you how to serve my children. I will use you like I used Abraham. And at that time, I was reminded of what I read earlier in Jeremiah 1 and that he has called me to be a prophet to the nations. And I thought, I don't know what prophets to the nations mean. I thought that all prophets and all prophecies ceased when Jesus came. And that's the tradition that I came out of. So I've never been 
to a, a Holy Spirit filled church or a charismatic church or any other church than the one I used to go to. And so this was very strange to me to the point where I thought this is impossible. This is, this must be me hallucinating, but the voice of God. And this is what I'm going to share with you, that what happened after this supernatural experience, that the voice of God will carry you through. And what happened after that, this went on for an hour and a half, 90 minutes nonstop that the Lord is speaking, prophesying. In that time, I began to mumble. I wouldn't say even speak, but I began to mumble and I thought, wow, I'm mumbling like a baby, but he said to me, he said to me, this is my language. This is my heavenly language. And this is the language that you can communicate with me one on one any minute of the day or night. This is a, an open line between me and your spirit. And so I began to mumble this and he encouraged me to even pray more and more after this experience. I thought, what just happened? I went to my wife. She was so ecstatic because she experienced the infilling of the Holy Spirit. I didn't know at that time, but apparently a month before that. And I thought, what just happened to me? What did just happen to me? But I tell you what happened to me. After that experience, I opened my house for strangers, for people on the street to come. I started to evangelize. Our house became a church. We started to invite all the people that we knew and coming from a medical background, people, my friends, my acquaintances, they thought that I lost my mind. They thought Mina has absolutely been possessed by some sort of a spirit. But let me tell you, the Lord is faithful. For when we obey him, he did some amazing things. When someone had cancer and we prayed for him at the time, not even knowing that God heals that way, they would come and report three, four months later that they're cancer free. People who didn't know the Lord, who didn't know us, we would just invite them, feed them at least three times a week. And they would come and enjoy fellowship with the Lord. Come to His saving grace and become even ministers in His kingdom, being filled in the Holy Spirit and they, they would go and open their ministries and open their churches. God began to use me and my wife in such a way that all of our family, even our kids, became ministers. Let me tell you that this supernatural experience is what I want to pray for you because the God who raised a man who was born in Egypt, migrated to Australia and then called him to the U.S. to study here and minister in the U.S. He is the God who can change all your circumstances and bring you into your calling and your purpose in Jesus the Christ. So as I pray right now, I want you to receive this impartation because God is on the move for His remnant and He's anointing His sons and daughters for the work of the ministry. So wherever you are right now, just lift up your hands and receive. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, that you call your sons and daughters right now and that you release your anointing over them for the work and the equipping of the ministry. Father, that I see that you're anointing people for healing the sick, delivering the demon possessed and bringing people into your kingdom. I just want to encourage you that as you pray this prayer and receive this impartation, be assured that he is the one who will fill you, overfill you and use you in such a mighty way for his kingdom. It has been an absolute pleasure to share my supernatural story with you. Be blessed and stay blessed.